Amen. Hallelujah. Did you understand that? So countries are not going to rule the people. System is going to rule the people. And this system is specifically coming for one person who is going to come very soon. His name is Antichrist. Amen. Hallelujah. And another thing is, if you improvements in the technology, you got to understand, the improvement in the technology is hard enough. And you are going to see for the next decade. Am I reaching you? If you are a person of 50 to 60 years of age, you are seeing your father's uh, uh, generation, which is very slow developing. And uh, my generation, if I take it, I'm, I'm 50, I can take my example. I, I see my father's generation very slow developing. In my generation, it is okay. But in my daughter's generation, it's going very fast. And next generation, no time everything will develop. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what I'm talking. Because there is no time to develop slowly as it was in my father's day. Because the Lord is going to come so before the Lord comes with his world, the devil is developing every kind of technology to control in the form of system that every individual will be lost in Jesus' name. Am I reaching you? This is why we are seeing the technology not going like this now, but technology is going like this. It is. Amen? You've got to understand this very carefully. Because the Bible can see all the signs are fulfilled and the Lord Jesus would come anytime. So if the Lord Jesus would come, how the Antichrist can control the whole world sitting at one point? Because there should be a system developed and that system only can control not only the individual, but control the Christians and every kind of people, all that can raise. Amen. Hallelujah. And it, it, it's mind boggling. As you get into this next decade, is a very, very important decade for every one of us. And we see the technology's pool is such a way that it, it, it bothers everybody. And already this Facebook and WhatsApp is bothering everybody. Because, you know what they say? If you can't agree with your terms, you can, you can stop using the app. Simple as that. Because, all these platforms, so-called uh, this, uh, 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 this social media platform, they developed in such a way to tell you that they will help you and they got you into it. One the minute that you got you into that, it's not only they're telling you, they're dictating terms on you. Because you are so used to the technology, without the technology, you are paralyzed. And that's the time they dictate terms to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This is the age we are living in today. And the next ticket is so, so important for us that we should keep watch what we are doing. We should keep watch what we are saying and we should keep watch how we are living in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. But my message is not to threaten you. My message is to tell you in the name of Jesus, there is a God who is famous for the miracle. There is a God who famous for everything that he can give you the strength and the knowledge that you can live your life victoriously so that you can bring others into Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. That is what I'm here. I'm not here to threaten you. I'm here to encourage you and tell you there is a God who you worship. He is a living God and nothing can hamper him. Hallelujah. No power in this world can come against him. But yes, there are troubles as Paul says. Amen. But in the troubles, you got to be victorious because Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, as I said, social media. And no social media is owned by one person. You got to be ready. You got to think all these things what I'm saying. No social media is owned by one person. People, four, five people in one day. Amen. Hallelujah. If you see, if you see Google, it's multiple people. If you see Facebook, it's multiple people. If you see WhatsApp, it's multiple people. If you see YouTube, it's multiple people. If you see Apple computer, also multiple people. Though it started with one person. You know what I'm saying? It is nobody earlier days, earlier days, and somebody invents the country name comes first. Amen, amen. 
So on the country, so on suppose you invented, and it is what you call the, uh, 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 what do you say that? Pendant. We take a pick in the name. But now you say, there is no possible, it's only system. Google system, WhatsApp, all this stuff, a completely developed by people. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we understand what I'm saying. Social platforms started in such a way they can attract you, show some benefits on you, till you get into their hand, and once they get into it, you are gone. Because you cannot live without the social media today. You cannot live without the social activities today. Because, and not only that, I want to do, uh, tell you this quote in the past case, you know what they say? Divide and rule. Amen. Hallelujah. You heard that word? Divide and rule was a, uh, uh, was a uh, theme adopted by a lot of kings and people in our olden days. But now the thing is, isolate and win. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All this social media stuff is isolating you from your family, isolating you from your wife. Isolating you from your husband, isolating you from the children, everything. You go somewhere, sit there, and you do what you want. And you know how many hours you are saying, Isolate to win you. Hallelujah. We've got to be very careful as Christians, as the body of Christ. We've got to be very careful to understand the wife of the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I have so much to say. Let me go quickly, people of God. And I, my topic today is. Four generation. Amen. Hallelujah. Four, uh, sorry. Five G Mama. Who invented five G? I wanted to go into the Google and search, and there's no person invented the one person invented five G. Five G is the advance of, advancement of technology from one G, two G, three G, four G, and now come to four G. But I tell you, certain facts of the five G in mind boggle you, and it'll tell you what God really today. Amen. Hallelujah. Because this is the sign, this is a very clear sign that we are going into the end time. And this is a very clear sign that the coming of the Lord is at hand. And this is a very clear sign that the Lord is going to come. And that's the reason the world is getting ready to smash the people. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it's your duty and my duty to empower the Lord of Christ and empower the people and to tell the people this is what it is. You've got to be in Christ. Hallelujah. Or oh, to God. People of God, a uh, 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 post of my name, uh, uh, Qualcomm has played a major role in inventing many fundamental technologies that drive the industry forward and make up 5G the next wireless planet. 5G is a game changer of the world. Can I repeat it? 5G is a game changer of the world because the wireless technology is the one which the Antichrist is required. And the wireless technology is the one which is required to set the standards so that they can dominate the world. Praise be to God's holy name. No company or a person owns 5G. As I explained, it is not a country based. It's not the person base, it's a system base, but this system is controlled by a handful of people. Praise be to God's holy name. People of God, I want to bring two facts what I read last night on the internet. You know what it's saying? WhatsApp forces users to agree to share private data, including phone number, Twitter, Facebook. All your private data will be shared by Facebook to uh, WhatsApp, which was not there before. And then it's only on the 4th, on the 4th of uh, 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 this month, they launched this. You can go into the internet and see the uh, uh, new privacy policy of WhatsApp. You can read all the things. People of God, this is really thanking my spirit that the reason God asked me to speak on this. When I, when I was preparing this message, I didn't know the 4th. The Lord put this message 30th of Jan, 30th of uh, December, and the uh, 4th of January, all the things are. That means this decade is a very crucial decade for every child of God, and especially to the church of God. Church has to rise to the occasion to win the soul and to strengthen that. There's no more days you can play with the church. There's no more days you can take a casual attitude. There's no time, and the devil knows there's no time. That's the reason he's coming, and you can never see the improvement of technology.
my lead for the next ten years. You are going to see. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Fifth generation. What is this fifth generation mobile? I'll go quickly so that you can get into the message. The fifth generation message is this. It is the fifth generation wireless technology that is advanced from one, two, three, four generations what we see. But what I'm trying to tell you is this is designed to increase our speed and reduce our latency and improve flexibility of wireless services. Amen. Hallelujah. It increases our speed. Then I looked up and saw what is increasing speed mean? I just show you before that. I tell me, 5G literally connects virtually everyone and everything together, including machines, objects, and devices, which was not there much earlier with 1 to 4G. And 5G is such a mind boggling technology that will be in no time coming under the power of this system. People of God, not only 5G, in maybe in few years time you'll see up to 10G. The speed is enormous. The capacity of data storage is enormous. You and me just cannot do anything but surrender to the technology. That is the days we are living in today. People of God, I just want to check what is the speed of this 5G, just for your information. I'm not going in details at all. I'm just giving only a little information. You know what's that? If you want to download a, a, a seven minutes video of 4G, it will take, uh, I mean, sorry, seven minutes. Okay? Two hours movie. If you download two hours movie on 4G, it will take seven minutes. But wait, the two hours movie, if you download on uh, uh, 5G, it is just 10 seconds. Can you imagine? Then it's seven minutes, and then it's 10 seconds. And people say it's a hundred times faster than 4G. Oh God. Hallelujah. And 5G. I just want to, I'm not, I'm just going very quickly. 65% of the world population will have 5G covered by 2025. 65% of the world population will be covered by 5G in 2025. And by 2025, 5G, 5G subscribers worldwide is expected to hit 2.6 billion people. 2025 to 2030, you don't know. What on its stand and almost they cover the whole world and that God to take place. That way it is easy for the enterprise to do anything further. Amen. Hallelujah. And why? When this 5G is introducing or discussing, many countries are not for it. Listen, that's what I'm saying. Many countries, including Australia, Australia is not for it. But now, Australia is accepted and we are having fight you already because Australia doesn't have an option but to accept the system. Otherwise, Australia will be lagging behind. You get me what I'm saying? It's a system controlling not the countries anymore. And this system is developed. It's called world economy system. One world system, one world economy, one world currency, one world religion, one world. Thing, one word, one word, one word. It is not a government, it is a system, and every government will accommodate to the system. One more currency, one more economy, one more religion, and uh, one word, one word, one word. People of God, you must be knowing very well today. There's no time for us. No time for us to see here and there. Strengthen the church. Help the church. Coming up the Lord is at hand. It is the time for us to be holy. It's a time for us to be taking the power of God and reaching out people and strengthening each other. And we waiting. It is a time to wait in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Everything, brother. Everything, sister. We are reaching. Because of advantages of fighting so much. Governments would not say no to it. What are the advantages of 5G? I saw, I, I can tell you only three. And it will change the health system. It will change 
the education system, and in the chain, the agricultural system. These three are so much at great as they show with the 5G, and governments have no option but to accept this. Amen. Hallelujah. Please understand it. And I, I'm going very quickly. Please bear with me. Because this is not a higher bandwidth. Yeah. After uh, 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 Wi Fi connections, and uh, it can store a lot of data. Because of all these things, education needs a lot of data storage, and then health needs a lot of uh, data storage. And what are the health advancements I'll show you? Okay. If you see the health advancements, now people are living in a remote country. And in order to come to the city to see the doctor, they can remotely connect, uh, connect to, uh, uh, through the uh, uh, technology and they can have an appointment which is called the virtual appointment. And any medicine and any surgery. That means a person who is sitting uh, uh, 300 or 500 uh, miles away, in order to come to the city, uh, rather they can do a daily surgery through the technology. You understand what I'm talking about? That is where countries are going towards such an advancement. And it comes to the agriculture, it says that 5G have a sensor technology that can see the ground level to see the moisture levels. And with the following they are going there, but with the point it said farmers to monitor uh, the use of sensor technology on farms to monitor uh, uh, soil moisture is designed to help improve it. Why do you think less water? In other words, with the 5G technology, they use less water in plenty of water. So it's a big result of a revolution in terms of agriculture. Not only that, I'm just going very quick. You want to read, read from all the internet, and education system is going to be highly, highly, highly evolved. And I'm hallelujah. Education system is going to be because again, as I said, there's a lot of data provided. There's a communication between you don't need to go, you don't need to be here, you can be anywhere, any place, you can connect it, you can maintain the state, you can everything you can do it, and then hallelujah. And again, it's a teleeducation system will be followed. And and uh, the bandwidth of this technology is very high, and the storage capacity is enormous. That's what it means. But one problem with this. Is one problem is what I want to talk to you. Because of these advantages, countries could not say no. Because of the system, they have to adopt it. But the, the, uh, one, one problem with this is frequency problems. I'm not, I, I, I'm condensing as much as I can, but I have to speak to this because this is where we are working today. This is where we are living today. We got to understand it. unless you know where you are living today, you cannot go where you want to go. I mean, hallelujah. It's very important you are set up where you are. That makes the difference for you to take the next step. People of there is a frequency problem. From 1G to 4G, they operate below 50 gigahertz frequency. That's what the uh, 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 information tells. But this technology, I read it, but 5G use of frequencies from 600 megahertz and above, including the millimeter wavelengths between 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. When is 6 gigahertz of the four, and this is between 30, uh, uh, the millimeter, the millimeter wavelength is between 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. Why I say this? Why I say this is? What the scientists are telling is, what the scientists are telling is, at 60 gigahertz, you have a problem with oxygen. At 60 gigahertz, what the oxygen molecules in the atmosphere interact with the radio frequency signal. These are the electromagnetic energy. 5G is nothing but the electromagnetic energy and the radio frequency signals. So what they are saying is, at 60 gigahertz, Oxygen molecule will uh, 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 interact with uh, radio frequency signals and that causes causes significant agitation. Here is science starts to live In other words, you can't breathe. Because of oxygen, you're carrying a fancy mobile. So for example, if it goes, it doesn't, but there are applications are not uh, uh, going to be there. 
but because at 60 gigahertz oxygen level, the scientist says you cannot do it. I'll show you that. I, 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 I'll show you that. Pictures. No to 5G. No to 5G. Oxygen at 60 gigahertz will not accept your body. That will happen to you if you do not have oxygen. This is a big problem. And how many scientists? 240 scientists made remarks. I just want to show you these facts. 240 scientists who have published, you know, these reviews, research on the biological and health effects of uh, 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 non-ionizing electromagnetic fields. People have got put all these things in. We have get great health problems. This is what I want to tell you. And what are the health problems? We can see that increased cancer risk, cellular stress, increased in uh, hormonal uh, 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 imbalances and genetical disorders and change of reproductive systems, memory, memory uh, 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 deficits, neurological disorders, and negative impacts on general well-being of the human beings. So many, so many, so many impacting. You see this? This is all what we are talking about. See the pictures, see the pictures, how this fight is taken, what is the things that is going to happen, but how can you overcome this uncertainty? As I said, my interest is not to show how bad this technology, uh, how good this technology, how advanced this technology, because this technology is needed for somebody who is going to come, his name is Adam Christ, but before that, God is saying, you can walk on this, amen, hallelujah. Whatever the health that causes, uh, whatever the sickness causes, whatever the things that uh, all this technology brings, you will be saved under the blood of Jesus, amen, hallelujah. This is what the church has to be ready. No church, no, the real message is now that. No church has to take advantage of this thing. And church has to be on the proactive side. And church has to be reactive to the situation. And church has to go into this world in Jesus' name. And church has to tell every person this is what it's going to be. The coming of the Lord is at hand. That's the reason the technology is going so fast. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God. It's a church. To raise to this occasion, amen, hallelujah. It's a church to educate the people. It's a church to gather people and come here so that they can come back and return to Jesus, amen, hallelujah. There are two kinds of people in the church. When I say church, when I say church, born again, baptized, anointed, and walking according to the word of God, they call church. My definition is very simple. Let me not get into the other topic. Church, how can you can welcome this uncertainty? The Lord put this beautiful verse into my mind. And that, that the Spirit of God telling me there are two kinds of people in the church. One kind of people, they are proactive. That means before something comes, they sit in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. And some believers, they are reactive. Oh, let it come. Where can I see that? All right? But the Lord is speaking both to the proactive and to the reactive. So that how you can be saved. Because you are proactive, wonderful, praise God. But if you are reactive, then you've got to be little error to come back because God is based to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God's word. I want you to take you one text. Exodus chapter 4. Verses 7 to 11. Exodus chapter 12, verses 7 to 8. Can somebody read for me, please? The use of All right, okay. I read it. As, as you can see, the slide, Exodus 12, 7, 10, 7 to 11, it says, Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses 
when they eat the lamb. Verse 8, the same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. And number 9, do not eat the meat a raw meat of a boiling water but roasted over fire with the head, legs and internal organs. And verse 11 and read, this is how you have to eat it. With your uh, throat tucked into your belt, your standards on your feet, and your staff in your hand, eat in haste, it is God's festival. Listen carefully, church. I'm sorry, I've explained to you certain things so that you understand the meaning of the hour. But my intention is not to explain how much that is, but my intention today, how God can make you all come. And hallelujah. People of God, in Exodus chapter 12, we see how the people of uh, uh, Israel walk in the house to take the Passover night. And, and hallelujah. The Passover. You know what's happening is God sent the tenth plague, which is called the angel of death. And the angel of death is coming over every place. It is not coming only just Egypt. I mean, only just uh, Egyptian houses. It is coming everywhere, all through the Egypt. But those who are the children of God, their houses are spared. And those who are not the children of God, their houses are Even today, when you are going into the next uh, uh, day, there will be so much of disturbance uh, in terms of health. Not so many things. And I tell you in the name of Jesus, if you are the child of God, you will be saved because of the blood of Jesus. That's what God is saying. Church has to step up and to use the blood of Jesus. It's not reacting your prayer to heaven and heaven. No, the angel of death is coming. Moses is telling you have to kill the lamb. You have to do a sacrifice meal. And not only that, outside there should be a Black covering, hallelujah. People of God, this is what the church has to do when you are going into this phase of life. The church has to understand the power of the blood of Jesus. The church has to understand why the blood of Jesus can save you. The church has to understand the efficacy and the power of the blood inside the house and outside the house. And then, hallelujah. Blood is not only outside, blood has to be inside as well. Blood has to be outside for one purpose and blood has to be inside for another purpose. Outside and inside, the blood of Jesus can save you from any harm in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And this is what the call of the church, this generation, especially this 10 years, a crucial years, I tell you in the name of Jesus, and you don't know how the devil spoils the church. All kinds of uh, casual natures in the church can rob the devil. My God is a God who raised the people for this occasion to speak like Jeremiah, to speak like Ezekiel, to speak like John the Baptist and give a call. This is what the church has to do in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are the, you and me are the powerhouse of God. You and me have to strengthen the pillars of the church. You and me call to go out and save people for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Church is not an ordinary place. Church is a powerhouse of God. Church will build people. Church will restore people. Church will do every kind of power into the people's sight in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, outside you need a blood, and inside you need one thing. Outside of the work is different, and inside is different. Let me tell you, outside is blood to be seen, blood to be applied, and blood to be spared. I preach four sermons. What is blood applying? What is blood uh, 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 spearing? What is blood? Uh, I know cleansing all different, different uh, experiences with the blood of Jesus. But to save time, blood is this something about Jesus who died 2000 years from the cross of Calvary. His blood is still available for us. Amen. Hallelujah. His blood is still available for us. And what you and me have to do is. You have to take the blood and apply it on the household. And this talks about two things. 
One, it talks about your house, little house, which are living you, your wife, and your children. And the second one, it talks about your house. Amen. Hallelujah. The body is the temple of God. So, one, you have to take care of yourself, applying the blood of Jesus every day, morning and evening, head to toe. And the blood of Jesus applied on me will keep away from every danger. Amen. Hallelujah. Blood. You know, blood application on you will protect you. Blood application in you washes you. Amen. Hallelujah. There are two kinds of application. Blood applied on you is a protection from every kind of evil that's coming against you. Blood. But when you apply the blood inside of you, it brings holiness. Amen. Hallelujah. So one is you are, your personality. And the second one is your house. That means you got to have the duty to cover your children with the blood of Jesus every day. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know how many parents you are taking this job every day. You are loving your hands on your children and apply the blood of Jesus that no evil will touch them in the name of Jesus. This is what God is speaking to the church in the coming years and maybe the next 10 years. You've got to be very careful to look after your children because your children are the Weapon for the devil, amen, hallelujah. Your children, devil is, devil is waiting to rob your children. And devil, it is our duty to cover them with the blood of Jesus, amen. And you take, the meal should be taken inside with the family, amen, hallelujah. People of God, it's a big message. I don't have time running against time. It's a big message. You got to, you got to take care of your family inside. That means that you got to, one is, Blood application and inside. You see that? I, I just give a slide. When you are uh, when you are eating inside, it says eating. How do you have to eat? Eat roasted meat. You can't have any half cooked meat or a boiled meat because if you are half cooked, still there's a blood inside. Because God completely eliminates the blood. And because blood has got life and God doesn't allow it. And heaven, the roast talks about Jesus suffering on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Jesus suffered on the cross of Calvary. And he took the he, he took the sin on you and it was punished by God. It was roasted by God because of you and me. And it talks about Jesus. And uh, uh, another thing that they have to eat the unleavened bread. Unleavened bread talks about without any blemish, amen, hallelujah, without any sin, without any, you know, un un uh, uh, unwanted stuff, I tell you in Jesus' name. And my Jesus has got no sin, amen, hallelujah, he is the unleavened bread, amen, hallelujah. And uh, verse 20 talks about Jesus, unleavened bread talks about Jesus, and bitter hands talk about the suffering of Jesus, amen, hallelujah. That thing inside, what is happening is they're eating they're, they're eating the roasting meat, they're eating the unleavened bread, and they're eating the hair, and all talks about Jesus. That means you have to have to be Jesus every day. Amen. Hallelujah. You get me what I'm saying? Outside is a blood for your protection. Inside is a fellowship for you to grow with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You can see that. And inside. One, they're eating. You read that uh, 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 Exodus chapter 4. Inside they're eating, when they're eating, when they're eating, you don't understand, they're doing something. You know what they're doing? They're eating casually. They have to eat in here by the tail screen. And when they're eating, they're the tucked up. They're claw tucked into the bag. You don't understand. There are three things they're doing. They're they're picking up the blood, a uh, bit, and the second thing is they wear the sandal, and the third thing is they have a staff. That's how they have it. Not like sitting in the uh, 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 nicely uh, in a what do you call a uh, 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 nice place and uh, eating slowly like that. No, no, no. They are not eating like that. They are. The cloak is stuck inside the belt, and they wear the sandals. And they have a staff in their hand and they're eating hurriedly, hesitant, hesitant. You know what that talks about? That talks about your readiness to meet the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Anytime God can come, amen. Hallelujah. That means your your, your clock back is talks about the truth. Ephesians chapter 6, we see that your bed, it talks about the truth. Who is truth? Jesus is truth. Amen. I am the way, truth, and the life. That means he's Jesus. 
and your sands on the feet talks about the salvation. And salvation is nothing but Jesus. You know, Romans 10, uh, 15, we see that. And uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 52, 2, we see that. You know, how, how beautiful are the feet of the people of God on the mountains. And Romans, Romans uh, you can see that the uh, verse is pretty well. He talks about the truth. Truth is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And he talks about how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. And the third one is the rod and the staff. That again talks about Jesus. Amen. The staff and the rod talks about the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the word of God. In other words, in Shai, you're doing two things. You're eating and you're preparing. Amen. If you get my point, church has to eat. And that means church has to have fellowship with the Lord and church has to be ready with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Anytime Jesus can come, you have to go. And at the same time, you are having fellowship. So fellowship and preparation should be inside and your blood coming is outside. Can you say one amen? Hallelujah. That is what the church might be for. Church has to prepare the church. Church has to prepare the children of God. Church has to bring the fellowship of God. Church has to feed with the word of God so that the church can be ready with a sandal, with a star and tuck in church. Anytime Christ come, I go. Hallelujah. That is how you have to prepare for the next decade. Amen. Hallelujah. It's awesome. It's awesome, my dear. That's how you got to ready for the coming generation to praise. That's how you have to protect your children. That's how you have to save your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm going to come to a prayer. And uh, I'm going to come to a God. I have another thing, but I'm stopping here. You know how much you understand of the 5G technology and not understand it. But one thing I tell you, the five G technology is going such a fast way. If you don't know what you are doing, you'll miss yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. And because of this technology, we get into a lot of stress. Because of this technology, we get into a lot of uh, you know commotion and distress and so many things. But God is saying church has to be ready. Amen. Hallelujah. And another thing is these sandals and then uh, 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 staff. And the truth belt, he talks about you to go to preach the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to be always with the sand. This is all readiness. Church has to be ready. That's what we are here. Amen. You got to, we all have to do hand in hand to build the church for the glory of God. What I mean, build the church is bringing people into the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the coming of the Lord is at hand. 